it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage and it is Thursday. I have not been having a very good week as far as sourcing is concerned. I went to an estate sale this morning. It started at 9 a.m. so I thought and so did other people. So I arrived there and there was maybe 10 people in line. So I was thinking what a great what a great uh, day so far. You know not many people in line and pretty good. So I think we had about 20 minutes to stand around and not long after I got out of the car, I heard other people talking about a discrepancy in time. So in the newspaper, it listed the sale starting at 12 and on estatesales.net, it said 9 a.m. Now that's where I got my information from uh, is on estate sales. And the thing about estate sales, in contrast to the newspaper, is that if you don't live in town or nearby, you're going to use estatesales.net. So obviously people are gonna be driving a lot farther to get to the estate sale. So there were some pretty unhappy people. Oh, so anyways, which time was correct? Well, noon was correct. So we're waiting in line. Some people were really upset. They called her on her phone. Any, anyway, she ended up coming in. Everything was fine. She ended up coming in at 9.15 or 9.20. So a couple people had already left by then, but that's okay, all good. When I got in there, there wasn't much in there. Oh boy, it was, the thing with this particular estate sale company, she has other reseller friends and she allows them to come in and buy things before the sale begins. That's fine if you wanna do that, but don't take photos of the stuff until after that happens because there was things on the listing that people were driving specifically there for. So you go there, you arrive, maybe you're the first one in line even waiting and you get in only to find out that, oh, I already sold that. <sighs> That's not right. So that happened. Anyways, I didn't get anything. I found a trash can there. It was kind of like a 1940s, 50s metal trash can, cream color with like some pink flowers. And it was a dollar. I was like, whoa, this is great. So I grabbed it, was walking around, couldn't find a single thing else. Really, I couldn't. And I looked down because my hand was kind of rubbing the side of it and it was there was something that was kind of scratching and I looked down and there's a big hole in the metal so that's basically useless at that point and, and it wasn't a great trash can to begin with it was on the shorter side but I was trying to make the best of the morning so that was a dud uh, so anyways I came home I packaged my items I sold a set of Franciscan Ivy plates eight of them in the luncheon style, which are like eight and eight, eight and a quarter or so size. So I sold a set of those for a hundred dollars with shipping included. And the shipping on that was like $15. So that's really great. Uh, about $10 a plate. And then I sold a French horn, like a brass one that you'd hang on the wall for like Christmas or something. And then a pair of glasses, like retro style glasses. I just wanted to show you my new pin that arrived. It just came in the mail and here it is. It's really, really pretty. It's an Esterbrook J transitional pin from 1944 probably. And it's just a really pretty green color and it has sort of an art deco look to it from here and also on the top. This is the second version of this particular pin as far as I know. The first version had a jewel on the bottom. This has a jewel on the top. So yeah, and then jewel just refers to a black piece of plastic, really. There is no jewel. It's just that little bit of black right there. And so the first version would also have one on the bottom. And this never came with one. So I already filled it. I grabbed this ink from eBay. It's Montverde Green ink. So it's a really pretty green and I'm gonna try to write with it I need to switch hands well this is really difficult so you unscrew the cap yes it's a screw off cap and here is the nib so it came with this one here it says Esterbrook 3550 this is a firm nib so there's not much give to it and then it also came with these other nibs I'll go through those in just a bit let's see here Kind of hard to write with one hand with a little piece of paper. It writes really smoothly, actually. Um, 
yeah, I say that, no, I did that. <laughs> It's hard, this paper wants to move. But it is a really fun pen. It's a little on the small side, unposted. See how it kind of doesn't fit all the way? That's all right. If I was to put the cap on the end, that's called posting it. And that would, let's see if I can manage. And that would extend the pen, there we go, so that it has more of a bigger, you know, bigger feel in the hand. It also makes it a little bit more balanced. Very nice pen, I'm very happy with it. So I paid um, $47 with shipping included. Now for a pen like this, that's a little on the high side, but this was my first pen purchase and I did wanna go vintage and I did want it to work right out of the gate. So the by itself, that's not a great price, but this comes with a nib on it that is a little bit rarer than most. They call this the Starburst design. So it has these extra lines on there. Not really sure what makes that rare other than the fact that people call it rare online. So it also came with these other four nibs in their boxes. And a great thing about this particular pin is that it is made to have interchangeable nibs. And each one of these nibs is a different thickness. This one here happens to be I don't know if it says it there or if it says it here. I think it's the stub, which is a little bit more of a thicker line. It kind of looks more calligraphy, not like a great calligraphy pen, but it gives that appearance if you use it, you know, a certain way. So we've got that one there. It says 2442 fine stub. And then this here is a firm medium. Most of these are gonna be firm because Back in the day, they didn't really have flexible nibs. Wasn't very common. Firm, fine. This Greg one here, oh great, there we go. Shorthand, it gives you a little example. I didn't know that they did. Perfect. That does help quite a bit. Okay, that's what I, see how it has a variance in the, the wording there? Kind of looks more calligraph, cal like calligraphy. So that's the fine stub, general writing. That might be a nice one to use. Another general writing and then shorthand. So I don't know what the difference between some of these are. Just this one right off the bat works pretty nicely in my opinion. I'm not too particular, but I will wanna try these out and see how it goes. I filled the pen, it was pretty easy to do. It's a lever operation. So there's the lever right there. And I'm not going to open that because if I did, then ink would be spilling out. But what you do is you take the top of this you take this right here and you bend that down like a lever and it'll look like an L off the side of there. You'll stick it into the ink, push it up back into place and that fills the ink. So of course, if you take this off and let it go down, the ink will spill out. But very nice and very happy with this pen. All of these are a dollar, pretty good price. A bluebird. So you may notice something a little bit different. Yes, I got a new table and chair set. These items came from a new place that I've never been before and I'm gonna start going because it's a flea market and it's not very far away. I had no clue that it was even there and I only found out about it because I heard in town here that they were gonna be opening up a new resale shop just around the corner from where we live. And so I went over there. It's more of a warehouse space, but there is a place in the, in the front of it that you could do retail in. Well, there were some people doing some 
lifting and all that in the back and I seen them. So I went back there and I was asking like, when are you going to open up or all that? And they said, well, we don't know yet, but you know, we have another location. And I was like, no, I don't know that you have another location. So they said, yes, we do. And they told me it was in Marine, which is mm, about 15 minutes away, about 15, 20 minutes away, Marine, Illinois. So I went over there and I found some neat things, including this table. So yeah, the first thing I'll show you though is this table. I went ahead and bought it. So I bought the tabletop. Oh, we're not having that. No, no. Get out there. So I bought this table for $15. Yes, 15, pretty good price. And then I bought the chair separately for $4 a piece. I bought a total of 10 chairs, <laughs> which is kind of a lot, but we needed six up here. And then I thought I might as well buy four more for the basement table. I'll show you that a little bit later but we have a existing table that has a top of only this, which is the white with the gold speck. So we have a table like that downstairs and I wanted some period chairs to go with it. So pretty cool table, all in all, uh, $4 per chair, $15 for the table and she's ready to come in. I also found a few things to of course sell. So we'll go over that real quickly. I bought this here for a dollar. It's made by Schaefer. That's a pen company. And we have here a pen. So it has the stand, solid walnut. I think I can get that little bit of smudgy stuff off of there. It doesn't even look hardly used. So it comes with this walnut stand and then you stick this into that, like that, and then you stick the pen into there really interesting. I looked it up online. They go for about 30 bucks and I paid a dollar. So yeah. Now the thing about this place is they open on Thursday and I actually went on a Friday. So I went there Friday and this stuff was what was left over. So going forward, I'm going to go back on Thursday morning, right when they open and maybe I'll get a lot more stuff, but I was pretty happy with just what I found in the aftermath. So grab that. I also found this really neat desk set and it has two pins on it. I don't know. Let's see. Who is it made by? We don't know. It's just a generic brand. One of the pins works. I don't remember. I think it's this pin work, works right there. This one doesn't. Not a big deal. You can switch out the cartridge on the inside of it. But it comes with this really neat little calendar display that you can switch up. It has these extra cards in the back. So this here, I guess, doesn't change except for that and that. And I don't know, maybe there was originally another card or something, but then it also has all of these. So it has all the months that you just assemble like that. So pretty interesting. I think I paid $2 for this. It has a nice, pretty marble base to it. And I think that'll do pretty well online too. Maybe around the $30 range as well. I also grabbed this really cool poker set and it has wood chips. That's one of the reasons why I grabbed it because it's cool. And I grabbed it because it rotates, very fun. And I also grabbed it because it's a beautiful wood color in great shape. And I also grabbed it because it comes with this cover. So, oh, and then I also grabbed it <laughs> because it was only $4. So lots of reasons to grab this and it'll go for probably $30, I hope. I don't know, I haven't looked it up yet. They do sell these in my antique mall and I routinely see them for 30 and $40. Don't know if they sell for that, but that's what they're priced at. So I thought it was worth taking a chance it, because it's so in nice shape and it's wood and not plastic and all that. I grabbed it for $4, had to. Also grabbed this green trash can in this really rich, deep emerald green. It was only $2 right there. And all in all in good shape. It's not the most spectacular trash can. Doesn't have a lot of of detail or stuff going for it, but it has this nice Greek key design with this faux green leather. So that's neat. Okay, I also grabbed this bunch of stuff right here. This was $2. It's little kittens in a basket, salt and pepper shaker, marked Japan. So $2, had to grab that. That'll probably sell for about $14 plus shipping, maybe like $18 all in online. And then I grabbed these little guys here for a dollar. They were all sold as a set. 
wouldn't normally grab some of these things like this. This will go in my booth. Uh, this is like a toy or something. I don't know. Made in Taiwan. Kind of cute though still. I I think I only really grabbed it for this because I thought it was kind of cute. It's a Joseph original as well. Mark Japan in great shape. And then this is also a Japan piece in pretty good shape. OMC. So yeah, that works out nicely. So let's see, other than that, that's all I grabbed from that place. And then earlier in the week, I went to another town. I failed tremendously. I got like nothing and it was a lot of driving. So I went to that town did manage, however, to find this little pink bowl with the splatterware on the outside of it. And it is marked Kenwood, USA. So it has that pink splatter. It's only $2 and we'll see what that does online. I was hoping for like 20 at least. I think it'll do do well with, with that. It's because pink, that's why I grabbed it. I thought that was fun. I also grabbed this little snail at Goodwill somewhere in the same town a dollar literally the only thing I grabbed in Goodwill so wasn't the best pickup this doesn't belong on the table that's from last week I think Aaron put that there well maybe I did I'm gonna blame him okay and then we got this here this was actually from a couple weeks ago but I've just been letting it sit on the counter and I forgot to include it in any of the hauls but this was from Goodwill you could see eight four um, really cool RCA. It does work. Tried it out. Needs to be cleaned. And I think it'll sell for about 30 or $40 online. So, uh, you know, I'm really happy. I, I found a new place to source that'll come in handy in the winter, especially whenever yard sales, estate sales are a little bit drier. I almost feel like they are dry now, but yes, it'll be even more great in the winter. Okay, so I actually forgot to mention this, but I inherited all of these Christmas houses and villages about a week ago from my grandma. So yeah, that's a lot. And that's not even half of them. So I have more to get and then I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna deal with these, but I don't think I'm gonna keep most of them. So I got all those and then there's box there and then there's some different trees and things and then some people so much to deal with. Okay, well, <laughs> I did get these chairs and I think that they work well with this table set because at least now the metal matches, the legs are like a goldish color and the table and the chair legs are also that same color. And they have this kind of faux brown leather padding. And I like that they're padded. Now, all these chairs, I don't think I went into it, but they are technically um, collapsible. So the, the seats flip up. I'm not gonna show you, it's too much of a hassle. But the seats flip up and then the legs, they are com like they're together. So it's it goes up like this, it goes across, and then it goes down on each side. So what you do is you take the top up and then this side folds in and then that side of legs fold in. And then it just kind of is a slender little figure of a chair. But yeah, we got those three and then one, the last one goes over there. So, yeah, that's kind of what we've been doing lately. Uh, I just seen a lot of chairs there and I thought, hey, we could use a few downstairs. Now, current, uh, previously what we were doing is just had black new card table chairs and it looked kind of garish, but these are much better. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I think I just said everything I need to say. All right, bye-bye.